Hey guys, what's up? Spud here, and today I'm going to teach you how to play Eye of the Tiger on guitar. If you guys click this link right here, that's going to take you through to the cover I did in my dressing gown about five months ago, and you can familiarise yourself with it if you've not seen it, and yeah, then you can, um, I hope that worked, you can come back to this tutorial and learn how to play it. By the way, thank you so much. That video has had like 14,000 views and that is super, super cool. I've enjoyed reading all your comments. And again, if you like learning and you like my covers, hit subscribe, thumb them up. That would be super awesome. I'm gonna change the camera angle right now and we can get right in and learn it. Have fun. Here's the palm muted introduction. <laughs> We're going to start real simple. We're going to take the first finger to the third fret of the A string and then with the right hand or your picking hand, whichever one that is, you're going to palm mute over the bridge quite heavily and alternate between down and up strokes. <laughs> The first one of every four, we're going to accent a little bit more firmly, which gives it a push which drives it on. It goes one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and gives it that same energy as the intro to the track. Now when it properly kicks in, we take that third fret of the A and we turn it into a power chord, C5. We're strum down and we're going to mute with our picking hand, keep the strings nice and tidy and also gives it that staccato burst of energy that you get in the song. You're going to play it again, move down two frets to B flat five and back up. Okay, you can do that twice in a row. Mute, nice and tidy. Okay, and on this final time, you're going to start with the same chord. You're going to hop down a string to G5, third fret of the E, and then move up one fret to the fourth fret, which is G sharp five. You can let that one sustain. When I'm ending that section and going into the verse, I come up to the 8th fret of the E, which is a C5 again, but it gives me more scope to slide down the neck and tail off that section. We're going to take the third finger and put it on the eighth fret of the G and the fourth finger on the eighth fret of the B. You should have those two notes. Behind that, you can prepare the second finger on the seventh fret of the G and the first finger on the sixth fret of the B. You should have those two notes. What we're going to start with is the two eights. We're going to play them. I like to give a little bit of vibrato there and slide down. Okay, coming back up to those notes, we're going to do lots of muting now between playing those notes. So we're going to start with a down up muted, okay, and then we're going to hit the two eights again, okay. Then we're going to do a downwards mute, then we're going to do an up stroke on the seven six, okay. Then we're going to go down up again for mutes. And back to the eight. So from the first one, 
we've got the longer drawn out one. Okay, and you repeat that exactly like that. After that, we come down to the C5 again, power chord, and you're gonna do this in the same fashion that you've just done those chords with the same mutes as well, but obviously power chord form now. We're gonna go from C5 to G5, up to G sharp. And that would be So it's the same as going between those two notes there, but power chords. It'll sound a little bit messier when you're going slow because you'll get harmonics in between and string noise, but when you speed it up, it keeps it nice and tidy and gives it a lot of energy. In the chorus, I like to start with a big power slide. I do some sort of raked, muted notes, coming up like this, and then with my second finger, I just slide down. I don't know if it does it exactly like that on record, but that's just my twist on things and the way I've done these. Okay. We're gonna to go to two mutes, down, up, and then hit an F5 power chord, which is the first fret of the E. Nice and strong. And that's supposed to be a little bit messy, it's pretty cool. Okay, we're gonna to go to those two eights that we had before, and we're gonna go down, up, and then hit the eights, and then down, up, and hit the seven, six. Okay, so you have this. Back to the F5 with your mutes. Now we're gonna to go to a C minor and we're gonna go down, up, mutes again. And very quickly transition from this C minor to this B flat major. I do that as a third finger bar, okay? So from here. The final part is this ascending riff and it works in sets of three. It goes high, low, high, and then it goes higher again, high, low, high, and it goes back and forth. Nice little ascending riff. You're gonna start with your fourth finger on the eighth fret of the A string, and you're gonna have your third finger prepped on the seven of the A, and you're gonna go back and forth. Okay. You're then gonna go up to the D string, fret five with the first finger, and then you're gonna go back to the eight on the A with your fourth finger. And you're gonna go back and forth between those, okay? So all in all. Then we're gonna hit the second finger on the sixth fret of the A. That's played uh, in triplets, so you have this one, two, three, one, two, three, boom. Okay. And coming out of that section, you'll either go back to or depending on where you are in the song.
In the middle, very, very simple, we have a three note little solo break, which is gonna start on the eighth fret of the B. There's no vibrato here as such. I mean, I put a little bit in, um, but as far as I can tell, it's just kept pretty straight. So you're gonna play the eighth fret with the third finger on the B. Then six. And then you're gonna hammer on and pull off from six to eight with the first and third finger. Okay. If you've not done that before, you're gonna hammer the note on. And then without picking again, pull off. Okay. From there, you're immediately gonna slide down. And the way you count that is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And it does that twice in a row. So a lot of people who cover this will drop out for the verse, but I looked at the piano and the manuscript and figured that I'd stack some triads and, you know, keep busy. Even if it's not a guitar on track, it doesn't mean you can't join in. So these are the chords I figured out. You're gonna take the uh, 17th fret of the A string uh, with your fourth finger, and you're gonna take your second finger and put it on the 13th fret of the D. So you've got a D and a D sharp which gives it that pretty weird sound. And your first finger is gonna be on the G fret 12. Um, that's an odd shape, that's why in the cover, if you watch me do it, I kind of cocked my guitar like Slash, because that's the only way I could get up high whilst standing up. But you're gonna strum these three together. Okay, it's your first shape. It's dissonant, it's cool. Then we're gonna go down to basically a major chord. It's the C major shape, but played with our fourth, third, and second fingers. And we have a first finger bar. Um, I'll help you out with that. It's gonna be fourth finger, 11th fret of the A. Third finger, 10th fret of the D. Um, second finger goes on ninth fret of the B. And then I bar my first finger on the G and the E on the eighth fret. But we're only gonna strum from the A string to the B string. That's what it should sound like. Might take a bit of a, uh, you know, a bit of a while getting used to that, but it's a shape you should know. That's A flat major, just for your reference. You're gonna then move that up two frets to B flat major. Okay. back to that first chord I showed you. So basically that's chord one and four, that's chord two and three. It goes like this. Out of that you'd kick on some distortion and you'd be into your chorus. One extra note in the middle You'll see on the cover, at one moment, it slides to the seventh fret of the G. The note of D. And yeah, you can give that a little bit of vibrato. It's probably the easiest thing you'll ever have to learn any part of a song ever on YouTube. Slides to the seventh fret of the G. And if I've taught you that badly or wrong, please thumb down the video. I apologize. There you go, guys. Sick job. Another tune in the bag, hopefully. And I hope you enjoyed learning it with me. I like to think that the stuff I do is pretty close to the record. I work out stuff by ear. And, you know, you should be practicing that yourself too. And if you've got any questions or you need any further help, uh, comment below and I will do my best to uh, help you out. So, yeah, until next time, guys. Rock on and enjoy.